What up everyone, this is Jamie Selects, and in this video I'm going to show you how to create an automated booking system using Google Calendar and a software called Airtable. Alright, so you see I have two calendars open here. The one on the right is the DJ who's doing the booking. So you'll see I have two pre-created events in here that I'm going to be filling. And the calendar on the left is the DJ who's going to be getting booked. So I'm going to go into the Airtable, and in this first part of the video I'm just going to show you what the finished product looks like so that way you can see what the end result is going to be and then in the second part of the video I'm going to show you actually how to build it from scratch okay so we're in the Airtable and we go to the two gigs here see 11.4 and 11.5 we go to our DJ field and we add DJ and then we add another DJ and we're going to see it goes from this open dates view and once you add a DJ it's going to go into the booked dates view and then we can see that the DJs are booked here and then we can also see that an automation is in place so that it automatically invites the DJ to the calendar events where they can see uh, what the venue is the time and dates and also in the description I have what gear is going to be used as well so that's the end product and now in the second part of the video I'm going to show you how to build this from scratch okay so in this part of the video I'm going to show you how to build the system from scratch so the first thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to pop into Google Calendar and we're going to create the calendar that you're going to use for the actual bookings. So I've already done this in my account, but I'll show you how to do it in yours. So you go to other calendars, you hit the plus, you hit create new calendar. Um, you can call it gig bookings or whatever makes sense for you. And then you hit create calendar and then that's the one that we're going to use specifically for this system. So you see I've done that here and I've created two um, events that I'm going to be booking for. So you're going to want to go in and create essentially individual events for every gig that you book. So whether it's different bars at different times or just different venues, whatever it is. Um, so you'll see that I have one, I added a new one here, venue C. I'll just delete this and create it from scratch so you can see how it works. So let's say I'm booking a brunch gig. This one's on Sundays, venue C. And then you're going to add a time. You're going to say whatever the time is, 11 to 3 p.m. If it repeats, then you can do weekly on whatever day. You can also just create them one off. They don't necessarily have to be repeating. Depends on whatever your situation is that you're booking for. If there's a location, then you can go ahead and add the location. Thrusters, classic spot in San Diego. Description. So I like to put the DJ gig here in here. I think it makes sense. So you put gear, turns, plus S9. And then if there's any instructions, you can add those in here, uh, anything that people need to know. And then the most important thing is you're gonna wanna make sure that you add it to the right calendar. So if you go to the calendar section and do gig bookings, then you hit save, and then it will create that for you. So then we're gonna pop into Airtable. So if you haven't created an Airtable account yet, then I have a referral link in the description below. So go ahead and create an Airtable account and then below the referral link, I have the link to the actual view only base, which you're going to make a copy of. So click on the base. So it should look like this. You're going to hit copy. And then it's going to make a copy into your Airtable instance with your account. So you hit add base. You can see I already have one in here. I've had to record this a few times. That's how it goes. Cool. We're in here. So you'll notice a little bit of a difference. This one has like a little calendar icon. That means it's synced. In the one that you just created, this is actually just kind of blank data that's copied over. So we're eventually going to delete this, but you can keep it here for reference. And we're going to, I'm going to show you how to sync your own calendar right now. So go ahead and hit the add or import and then sync data from Google Calendar. Now you're going to have to set up your calendar account or link them together. So hit connect new Google Calendar account and then just log in and walk, walk you through it. Then you can name it. And so I select this one. And then you're going to select the calendar that you created for the bookings. So start date, like today, or whenever you want to go back to, and then just sometime in the future that you want to have the calendar events in there. So you hit start, and in here we're going to choose specific fields. Um, you don't need all of them, and so it gets a little messy if you just sync all the fields. So the ones I recommend are title, start, end. You can shut off all day, creator, status. You can keep location. You can keep description, you can keep attendees, and get rid of created, updated, event link, and hangouts link, but keep event ID. And then you're just going to want to make sure that the title is going to be used as the primary field. 
So then hit next and then create table. And this might take a second, uh, so we'll just let it load. Um, while that's loading, you can go ahead and pop into the DJs table here. And then you're going to just list out all the DJs that you book. So you can put the DJ name, put the real name if you need that, the W9 for any reason. Oh, cool, there's my encounter. Um, but I'm just going to add myself here so that way we can do it for the demo. So the email is the thing that allows you to invite them. So the email is super important. Uh, the phone number is less important, but the email you'll need to have for sure. Cool. So this is the synced uh, table here. And so this is all of the gigs. And this is where we're going to be doing all of the booking. So we can actually move this over here. And we can get rid of this or just move it over there for now. And so you'll notice that there's a lot of extra fields going on in here, which we don't necessarily need. So I'm going to show you how to hide the ones that you don't want. Uh, so for example, we don't need this. Um, if you want to see this, you can. You can get rid of the event ID. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add a plus button. We're going to say link to another record. And we're going to select DJs. So basically what this allows us to do, uh, we don't need to do this. We can just hit create field. And then we're going to pull in the email as well. And then I like to drag this over here. And then we can also hide the email field. Cool. So the linking record works is essentially you're just adding in a record from a different table. So what you see here, we have the DJ one and two. And it's basically just referring to these records over here. So it's linking the two together. Cool. So now I'm going to show you how to create some nice easy filters so that way you can get started. So we're going to want to do open dates. And then we're going to do a booked dates. So with open dates, we're going to do a filter. And then when DJs is empty. Basically, this means like if there's no DJ booked, it's going to be in the open dates. Then we can go click on this little triangle button here and duplicate the view. And then we're going to name this one booked dates. Get rid of this. And then we're going to say filter is not empty. Cool. So then you can see if you add a DJ, it's going to be removed from the open dates. It's going to move into the booked dates. Cool. So that's the basic setup for Airtable. In the next part, I'm going to show you how to set up the actual automation. Cool. Now that we've got our basic Airtable set up, I'm going to show you how to create the automation. And before we do that, I just wanted to note one thing. So let's say you wanted to add the management of the bar to the actual calendar invite so they can actually see who the DJ is going to be. And that's totally possible. So you're just going to go into the calendar invite, hit edit, and then you're going to add the email of the bar owner, the manager, whoever it might be. So I'll just add my email and just for sake of the demo. And we're going to say this and following events. Hit OK. Send or don't send, invite all guests. Cool. Then we're going to go into our system. And whenever you make an update on the calendar, you're going to want to sync the Airtable base again. This will happen periodically. But if you ever want to see the change happen in real time, you can go click on the menu for the actual tab. And you can hit Sync Now. And then you'll see the email pops up um, for the manager. Cool. So then we're going to go into Automations. And we're going to create our first automation. So we're going to add a trigger. We're going to say when a record is updated. We're going to select the table. So gig bookings is the table. The view you don't need to do. And then select the field. So basically, basically saying whenever this field is updated, so you're going to select DJs. That's the trigger for the automation. Then the action. Then we're going to go scroll down to Google Calendar. And we're going to select update events, not create event, but update event, because we're going to be updating the one that already exists. You're going to select your Google Calendar. You're going to select the gig bookings calendar. And then for the event ID, this is why we pulled in for the sync. You can just hit the plus, and then you can search for ID. And you select event ID. And then the fields you're going to be updating are the attendees. So this is the attendee field within Google Calendar. So you're going to want to add two values here. Number one is attendees. This is so that when it updates, it doesn't remove the manager. 
we want to make sure that they are continued to be added. And then secondly, we're going to type in email and we're going to say email from DJs. So again, this is, and then you're going to select value. So if you didn't bring in the email field, I'll come back to this in just one second. I just want to show you one thing. Um, so when you're bringing in the DJ field, there's something called a lookup, which is what this field is right here. Now, if you didn't do it when you um, added the link, it's okay. You can just go to the DJs column and you can do add lookup fields and then you can add the email again here. And then it's going to show up as an additional field. I just currently have it hidden, but that's where it is right there. Cool. So just wanted to show you that in case you didn't get that part earlier. So back to the automation. We have it here. If you want to name it, you can do that as well. So add DJ to calendar when booked, whatever you want to name it. Cool. So looks good. We're going to go ahead and turn it on and then we're going to test it out. So I'm going to go back to data. I'm going to go ahead for a venue. I'm going to say DJ one. It's going to go into the booked dates view. And you can see that in the attendees, we have this. And then we also have email from the DJ. It's there as well. Then what's going to happen is you're going to see it pop up on the calendars. So if you refresh, I think we need to test it before it turns on. Oh, we got an error. Okay. Invalid address. Okay. Good note here. So Instead of adding these, you actually need to add a comma uh, to separate the two. So we're going to update this. And we're going to test it again. And it was successful. Cool. And just to make sure, let's go ahead and do this for this event as well. Just to double check. So what happened here is that on the calendar of the DJ who's getting booked, they got a calendar invite. They can say yes, they can see this. And if there's a location, they'll see that as well. They can respond yes. And then you'll also notice on the DJ who's booking it, uh, it was also added here as well. Now, if you ever need to switch DJs or like remove them, you can just go to the booked dates and you can remove the DJ uh, from there. And then the automation will also kick in. So basically whenever this field, the DJ field is updated, that's what the trigger is watching out for. And then it will update um, your calendar events as well since you have the automation set up. So you can go back into your calendar. You can refresh. And then you'll see that the DJ has been removed. Sometimes it takes a second for it to work, but then you can see that there um, it's been removed over here. So that is how the automation works. In the last part of the video, I'm just going to show you some optimizations that will allow you to play around with the system and create, um, essentially the, make it as, more as, e as easy as possible uh, for you to use and, and play around with. All right, so in this last part of the video, I'm going to show you how to optimize some of the views so that way you're not looking at this giant blob of data here and you can view it in specific ways. This is one of the coolest parts about Airtable. So the views on the left are basically just filters and groupings of data to allow for easier consumption. So I'm going to do two things here. I'm going to create an open and booked dates for each venue or show you how to do it for one. And then you can do it for each of the ones if you want to. And then I'll just show you how to create a past events view. So that way you can see that's everything that's happened in the past. So the first thing I'm going to go to open dates, I'm going to duplicate. I'm going to move it down here to create some separation. And I'm going to say open dates venue A. So in order to make this happen, I need to go to the filter. I'm going to say add condition. I'm going to say title contains or is either one venue A. And then it's going to only show things that have venue A in the title. Now let's say I only want to have this show events that are in the future and not the ones that are in the past. Then I can do that as well by clicking here and we're going to say start is on or after today. So this is going to show only events that are in the future. So 
if I want to create a booked copy of this, then I can go to here. I can create duplicate that. Say booked. And I'm going to change the filter on the DJs where it says is not empty. So that's why when a DJ is add for venue A, it will show up here. So just to show you how that works, I'm going to add a DJ. And then it's going to show up here. Cool. So that's creating things that are in the future. If you want to create something um, that's in the past, then let's just kind of keep this going here. We'll make a duplicate of here. You can also do this from scratch, but I'll just do a duplicate. And then we'll say past dates venue A. So the only thing you're going to change here is you're going to go to the filter and you're going to say start is on or before today. And then that's going to show you everything, that, everything that's in the past. It's blank for us at the moment just because all of the events that I created um, were in the future. But once um, you pass days pass, this is going to fill in with dates pass if you ever want to have a historical record. Hey, what up, everyone? This is Jamie Selects. Thank you again for watching the tutorial video. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up in the comments or shoot me an email, jamie at jamieselects.com. Happy to try to get that answered for you. And if you like the video, if you like the tutorials, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, the like button, uh, share it out with your homies. We really appreciate uh, showing this to many DJs who would find it useful. Until next time, thank you.